So our next uh, session we're going to move into is all about leadership. And this is such an important topic because ultimately your business is a reflection of you. And uh, everything starts with, uh, with, with you and your business. Uh, I met this man, his name is Paul Mitchell, about six months ago at a media event. And I was really amazed with his uh, level of knowledge and, uh, and wisdom. And uh, as I got to know him a little bit more, I found that he's had over 33 years experience um, as a top um, organizational psychologist. And he works with some of the most senior leaders across Australia and also Asia Pacific as well in helping them to grow their organizations. And he's worked with companies that have, you know, thousands in fact, tens of thousands of employees, so he knows about how to, um, how, to, how to help a leader achieve their full potential. So that's really what this is all about, how to become the leader that your team needs and so you can achieve the results that you want. There's going to be about 14 or 15 points that he's going to take you through, so you're going to be prepared, hopefully, to take lots and lots of notes, and uh, let's make him feel very welcome as he comes up here. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Paul Mitchell, everybody. I was here yesterday, I'm absolutely convinced this is not a business seminar, this is a cult, isn't it? I mean, really. I've never been to a business seminar where there's an award for best dancer on the floor. I mean, I, I just thought that was fantastic. And, 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 uh, and I'm getting the rituals too, the bagpipes are part of it, it's all, it's all coming clear to me, I know. Um, there's a wonderful old saying, I don't know if it's Dalai Lama or Buddha or someone said that the, uh, the mind can only absorb what the backside can endure. <laughs> so you've been sitting on your backsides for an hour now. We're just going to do, this is unscripted, so uh, we're just going to do a quick little exercise. Many people don't know, you actually have like a bit of a pump, a bit of a heart in the bottom of your, um, just down here. I'm no physiologist, but I just thought it would be good just to start pumping, you know. I know you are pumping, but let's just start pumping. So everybody up, everybody up. All we're going to do is, uh, we're going to do a bit of skippy, and you can go like that, you know, if you want to. But what I want you to do is just start pumping and just by jumping up and down and just get this going. If you can't do that, then sort of wank anything else you need to. So just, that's it. And you just say hello to someone. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Have a seat. That's good. That's enough. <laughs> wow, you guys are so keen. It's tremendous. Thank you for the tip. It was very interesting that I've noticed. Is that a thing you do with speakers? You give them a bit of an applause up front? Yes. Bloody brilliant. Bloody clever. Very clever. When I was 14 years old, I've got a Yiddish background. A year after my bar mitzvah, my, my grandfather, who was a businessman, would take me out. And I thought it was arrogance at the time. I didn't even know the word arrogance. But, uh, but I realised, what a smart cookie. He would, we would sit down to have a meal and he would give the waiter money up front. Up front, thank you for looking after us. It's a pleasure, pleasure, Mr. Collins. Pleasure, Roy. Thank you for looking after us. And I said, Grandpa, why do you do that? He said, well, because everybody else waits to see what level of service they get. You've got to grow up to be an entrepreneur. Don't wait for anything. Make it happen. <laughs> Give your tip up front. When you, speak, when you clap these speakers, you're giving a tip up front. You realise that? And what does it mean? It means to ensure passion, T-I-P. You have my passion. Thank you for the tip up front. I appreciate it. Very clever. Okay, so uh, welcome to the Energised Leader. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of exercises, get you involved, so I need a little bit of crowd control. Um, can you all just go like that? Just clap your hands up. Good, fantastic. So if you're talking to someone and they're really deeply into this thing and they go like that, they're not being rude. I just need to give it another instruction. Is that okay? The other thing is, I haven't done this for a while, but... Please pay attention when you get that because you don't want this. In fact, I used to do this years ago, but now it has a different meaning. Ah! Get louder than that. That's the way of getting attention, okay? You do not want that. Good. So, all right. None of this is new. Here's the bad news. I'm going to give you stuff that you already know. You already know. In fact, I guarantee every speaker that's been up here over this program is going to tell you this stuff. But is there a difference between what you know and what you do? Would you agree? Okay. I want you to do stuff. I want you to do stuff. You want to get stuff done, you've got to do stuff. You know? I've been to all these various entrepreneurial groups and I, what, what the big buzzword now is you've got to hit the G spot. <laughs> and the G spot. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. What's your name? 
<laughs> She's got, yes, please. <laughs> Gotta ask for what you want. <laughs> Wow, it's more than a cult. <laughs> but the G spot is the get shit done spot. GSD spot. That's what the G spot stands for. Get shit done. You've got a lot of stuff coming at you, have you not? If you're like me, you get this stuff, you get pumped up and you go, where the hell am I going to find the time to do it? Has anyone felt that? Is that bullshit? Good. You forget about finding the time, find the energy. Find the energy. That's what this session's about. So a couple of bits of philosophy stuff you already know, but it's important. The purpose of business is to give us more life, not to suck the life out of us. If your business is sucking the life out of you, folks, something's wrong. Covey died recently. Did you hear that? On the 16th, I'm sad. But what he said was, every person should make sure that their business plans are part of their life plan, not the other way around. Business funds life. I know you know that. But in the corporate world where I often work, you go into businesses and quite frankly, they are the killing fields of the spirit. And that's why you're here, are you not? Because you don't want that. And many of you have probably left that particular area. And it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, I've been in that area 33 years. I still believe we can make large organisations much more than that. But that's the first piece of philosophy. Second thing is that life is primary, business is secondary, your business funds life. And I love Dale. I mean, many people are here because they love Dale. He, he, he gets this stuff, does he not? He talks about family all the time. And you get it too, I know. But don't give it up. Don't give it up. Business funds life. So, a couple of things to never run out of. Sometimes you come to these seminars and if you're like me, you know, and I've got, uh, I've got this big ego, the bigger the ego, the bigger the security, insecurity. You realise that, don't you? So I've got a lot of insecurity, okay? So I, I come to these seminars and I hear people go, <laughs> We were doing one million last week, bugger that 90 days, pump it up to four million in 30 days. And you go, oh shit, I thought 50 grand was pretty good, you know? You, and you get, top line, vanity. Everybody say it. Bottom line, vanity. Bottom line, sanity. Do you, can you make a lot of money? And by the way, we've got some real geniuses in losing money up the front here. Did you hear them? Good on them. Shit, I'd be backing those people every day because they're the ones that got the lessons. And they've got enough humility to talk about it. I don't know where you are, I can't see you, but good on you. Good on you. Top line is vanity. You can make a lot of money and still go bust and still have a shitty life. Agreed? You can make a great bottom line on paper and still go bust. Do you know that too? Hey, we're doing really well. Why did we go out of business? Top line vanity, bottom line sanity, run out of cash, it's a calamity. <laughs> Never run out of cash. As I said, I've got a Yiddish background. I used to go in my grandfather's study. He had a little sign on his desk. Only now I get it. That was a guy that incorporated business with life. His spirituality with his business. And the sign on his desk was, in God we trust. All others, strictly cash. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> cash, cash, cash. <laughs> However, there's something else I'm suggesting you never run out of, and guess what that is? Energy. Energy. Now, who can think of the medical term called for when your body has totally run out of energy? Very good. Quick group. Not only are you a sex fiend, you're a genius as well. <laughs> I heard it. She was quick. So it's called dead. Now, here's the funny thing. I know we're in a business seminar, but here, get this one, okay? Your time starts now at your table discussed. Tick, 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 tick. If you had to run out of one, cash your energy, which would it be? Tick, 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 tick. Your time starts now. Tick, 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 tick. Exactly. Who said cash? Again, beep. Thank you for playing. Um, the reason why being that if you run out of cash, uh, and you, uh, 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 but, but, but you've still got energy, you can always make the what? And you heard it from these guys again up front, did you not? Yeah. Reckon they've run out of energy? Bullshit. They're just about to play. Never run out of energy. So this session is about never running out of energy. So forget all that time management stuff. I used to go to these time management courses and once again, the loser part of me, oh shit, I don't do my A's and my B's and my C's and I'm not getting bloody really good, you know. But I was getting results. I want you to move your mindset from managing time to managing energy. Here's a little insight that you're not going to get anywhere else. 
you'll never have enough time to do everything you have to do. <laughs> Everyone, oh, hold it, man. Getting your money's worth or what? Just go like that. This means there's a massive point just being made. And just go like that. Put your hands like that and go, oh, grasshopper. <laughs> oh, write that one down. <laughs> Managing your energy is just so important. So who are you? You're a lot of things, but guess what? You are the force, folks. You are the force. You're the force in your business. You are the person you've been waiting for. <laughs> You're it. You are it. And your job as a leader is to actually be a champion of energy. A champion of energy. There's two ways you do it. First of all, your role is to be uh, the battery part of your business for your clients, for your customers, for your family. Okay? Uh, so there you are, you're all charged. But guess what? You can't put the jumper leads on you. Did anyone put any jumper leads on themselves last night at King's Cross? I don't know if you were going up there. That's a different form of jumper leads up there. We won't go there. But you're also, you're also the person that renews the collective energy of the people that you lead. Does that make sense? The collective energy. And what I mean, the people you lead, you're going, well, Paul, I don't lead anyone. Gong! Thank you for playing. You lead customers, do you not? And I once went to a seminar in, 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 uh, in, in Bali, this, people were talking about, you know, the saying was, no one makes it on their own, which is exactly what Dale said. This guy put his hand up and he said, I've made it on my own. <laughs> you could see the tension and the, the, I mean, he looked older for years. I've made it on my own. I've been in business now for 10 years. It's a struggle, but I've made it on my own. <laughs> and it was just like, whoa. And this beautiful young kid who had a sort of uh, internet sort of business uh, piped up and said, wow, that's interesting, because I thought at least you needed a customer. <laughs> no one makes it on their own. You, your job, renew your own energy, get your own battery charged, because then it's much better off charging the battery than it Does that make sense? It's pretty basic stuff. Okay, and sometimes guess what? They'll say, bullshit, you can't do that. That's impossible. Don't tell me that. That's a stupid thing. You're not going to double your business. 90 days, crap. Your certainty has to be bigger than their doubt. Will there be doubters? Have you heard them? Yes. Family. You're going into your own business? I was a school teacher. My mum, my father, I'm a baby boomer. My father was on the Kokoda Trail. My mother was a nurse. I became a school teacher in the public sector. My parents were wrapped. Security for life. You know? And when I went to go out on my own, I said, don't do it, son. Look what you're giving up. And it was tough, okay? And you're going to hear those voices at you. I, I, and you'll get them all through your business. Your certainty has to be bigger than their doubt. And the way your certainty is there is because of your energy. 